Hi, I'm Jerry Albante. I'm Bobby White. Nina Gilkinson. And this is a word on swing. <laughs> Quick question. Uh, Quick. Who's your favorite person to dance with? I don't think about too much. In the world. She's thinking about it. Oh no, I don't have one. She's about it. Really? I got ones for different reasons. Oh yeah? Uh, let's do three of them. Um. Or two. Or this uh, one. I'll do a couple. Yeah. Uh, I really love dancing with Todd. Because he's super musical and leads crazy things and makes me feel kind of like a good follower. Yeah. Which I'm not necessarily actually a very good follower. Pretty good dancer. I'm a fine follower. Uh, but I refuse to be cowed by a leader, so I'm not really like emotionally set up to be a very good follower. Um, so at a certain point, like sometimes I'm like, no, no, I would really like to do this, so you could suck yeah. it. I'll, I'll give me a second. So I'm not necessarily a great follower. But so Todd's really good about that because he does uh, incorporate my non-following into some sweet stuff, which I really appreciate. And then, um, I know for me, Andy's just kind of like going home. Like, yeah. Andy and I have been dancing together for such a long time, and like I think that we've kind of grew into some stuff together. And so that always feels really good. Mm -hmm. And then, on a totally bizarre note, uh, Michael's actually one of my favorite people to dance with. Mm -hmm. uh, there, for a couple of reasons, like we teach together. Michael so Seguin. Michael Seguin. Oh. Yes, that guy in there. Um, MC. It's weird. It's weird because, like, I, you know, he, like, not in a mean way, but in just like truth way. I dance with people that are better than him a lot. Because I get, to, I'm really lucky and get to dance with all these very fancy, amazing people all the time. But what's cool about Michael is that he has absolutely no. Uh, I feel like he's a person that's like a really good dancer, but he holds me to absolutely no standard. Like we can just have the shittiest dance of all time or like the super best dance and afterwards he's like, yeah, sweet. Like nothing is on the line. There's no like, oh, I don't think I did super well with that. Like I have punched him in face in class by accident dancing with him and he's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, and also like we have a different relationship and obviously then me and Andy are yeah. taught. Very different, but. Um, but it's cool because it really is about fun for him. Like, he really enjoys dancing. He is very apparent. And I can just have extremely fun dances with him that are either super good or super not good. Mm -hmm. And it's the same amount of fun, kind of, either way. Yeah. Um, I actually dance with him more than I dance with anybody else because we live together. But also because, like, we teach a ton together. We teach, like, between three and five classes a week together, really consistently. So. I don't know. I should have thought about that more. Yeah. No, don't That's worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Thinking is bad. It's a great answer. <laughs> Who are some of your most influential old timers and why? Uh, well, Gene and Jewel. Gene Belows and Joel McGowan uh, were my first big influences. Um, I love the way Jean danced because I thought she was just the most graceful woman. That she's so poised and like she looks like a she looks like Miss America swing dancing. You know what I mean? Yes. Her hair is all perfect. Um, and then I liked Jewel because she was kind of the darker, darker. She was kind of like the sexier side of that. Like Jean was so cute and Jewel was just so vampy. And I really liked and just so chill. Like she would do killer stuff with her feet and just be like, whatever. You know what I mean? I thought that was really cool. Um, Another one of my, you know, it's really weird, I don't even know her name. The blonde woman from Don't Knock the Rock, short hair. Yes. White yes. sweater and long black skirt. Yes. She, I just, I mean, I've seen, I think that's the only clip of her. I've never seen another clip. If there is another clip, I didn't recognize that it was her. Uh, but I mean, I've watched that seven seconds, <laughs> 20,000 times probably. I think she's the shit. Um, I mean, other than that, there's, I have a lot of them, I guess. Uh, Almost all of the, I mean, not almost all, all of the Whitey's Lindy Hopper girls are killer 
in their very specific way. Like for me, the Whitey's and the Hopper Girls Net weren't as as influential because so much of their stuff was so performance based that like like it's hard to be super inspired by backflips. I mean, that's inspiring in a certain way, but it's not. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not quite the same. Like you don't get to see them do like a lot of mid tempo dancing. Yeah. Um, which for me, I think, is a little bit more indicative of how you actually dance than just super fast and super aerials and super routines. Uh, Norm is still inspiring to me because she's just the funniest, awesomest character of all time. Um, she she inspires me a little bit more, I think, as an older woman than she did as a younger woman. Like her ability to just be like, "This is who I am. I don't give a shit." Like is pretty awesome. Um, I'm also vaguely envious of her ability to wear that mix sequence. I'm going into that. <laughs> so dig, swing, because if you don't dig, swing, you don't dig fried chicken. So you grew up in the scene with Naomi? Yes, I did. <laughs> Uyama. Question mark? Just so. Right. So um, do you mind telling us a little bit about uh, what it was like growing up in the scene amongst your good friend and fellow dancer, Naomi? Yeah. Uyama? Um, you know, it was interesting, and I would love to actually hear her her answer to this question as well. Because I think, like, what's interesting is that um, when Naomi and I started, I was 13 and she was 16. And, like, at that time, like, when you were 13 years old, 16 is a worldly adult. You know what I mean? Like, she could drive, she had a period. Do you know what I mean? Like, all of these things that I was, like, just figuring out, right? Like, boys thought she was cute, she did not have braces, it was crazy, right? Um, so when we first started, like, I really deferred to her a lot. But it was interesting, like, the way that, you know, the way, like, any relationship changes and, and grows, right, as you get older. Because now, 27 and 30 is actually not, does I, it's, it's like our age now, you know what I mean? As opposed to, like, before my age and Naomi's age were really very different. And now it's kind of the same. Um, I don't know, one of the things I think I feel most grateful for is that uh, that we kind of got to experience it together. Like, we took our first classes together, we went to our first jam together, we went to our first contest together, we taught at our first weekend together. I mean, like, all my big firsts in swing dancing were, we were on our first team together. Like, they all involved Naomi, which I think is really cool. But the other thing that's really cool is that like we actually both got to similar places together, which is cool. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like at some point one of us was like, "Dad, I don't like this anymore," or was one of us wasn't like, "Dad, I'm really not good at this anymore." You know what I mean? Like, so we actually got to. I mean, up, like we got to go like the whole way together, which is really cool. Um, and we have obviously super different experiences, and we we haven't even lived near each other for the past five years. Um, but yeah, it's it's neat. Like it's it's cool that like she super knows where I'm coming from, and I kind of know where she's coming from too. You know what I mean? Like because we have the exact same start, and it is interesting. I mean, like uh, Jerry said this before, but like it's interesting to see because like for like people that I know now from dancing that have not seen Naomi and I around each other are like, oh, do you know Naomi? And I'm like, that's the funniest question you've ever asked. Like, huh. yes, I know Naomi. But it's true, like, you, you, you couldn't tell now that she and I started dancing together. It's not like we look similar when we dance. And I don't even think we teach very similarly or, like, even say very similar things. Like, we really took our own approach to this, you know. Um, but it is cool also because I know that there is someone forever in the scene that I can be like, remember when, blah. Like, how hilarious was that, or like, how ridiculous, or remember that when that happened. That's really cool, I think, to have someone you can look back on your whole dancing career and be like, you were there. You saw it. You know what I mean? I think that's cool. So follow up on that question. Do you ever consider or do you ever think about the fact that your peer group, not just you and Naomi, but like people like Sky and Andy and the rest of these people, who not you not only quote unquote grew up with, but you're considered probably probably 
guess you would call it uh, the most, probably the most uh, influential group of dancers in our scene. Uh, you, can, uh, you, and we've talked about how uh, your, well, that's kind of, uh, how hierarchies are uh, not very good, but do you actually consider, or you, you actually consider the amount of influence that you have, or you guys have in general? Does that? Um, yeah, Peter Strom and I were actually talking about this at Midwest Lumbee Fest. I stayed with him. Naomi was out of town, but um, I stayed with Peter and we sat on his porch, like you do, smoking cigarettes. I was thinking he wasn't saying. Peter does not say. Um, but we sat on his porch and talked a lot about, a lot about that. And like, uh, I mean, I think I don't have a really very realistic view or grasp on like what my role is in the scene. Yeah. I think in my head it's much less interesting than maybe it is in real life like we were talking about before. Um, maybe I should pay very good attention. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. Uh, but Peter and I were talking about that, about how like I feel a little bit like in, for whatever reason we all ended up in this place and like got past like a small amount of the torch. I don't think any one of us carries yeah. the weight of the scene on its shoulders or something, but you know, you, you do have, like, at a certain point, like, you do have a responsibility and to the scene. Um, because with great power comes great responsibility. I had to say that, sorry. <laughs> uh, but you do have a certain amount of responsibility for the scene, and, like, you know, the things you say actually do influence people's dancing. People do listen to you when you say stuff. And, uh, what's interesting is that the reason I kind of thought about it and noticed it was because I noticed how do I say this on film the right way I uh, Thank you, I noticed some things happening in the scene that I really did not agree with and then started to think about where those things come from and realized like how much influence every single teacher has over everything and how one person saying something enough times actually does create a lot of people listening and so, you know, if, if other people are going to make grand statements that I don't agree with, I'm going to not talk about what those things are or who those people are, but I'm going to take my little stance that I have and I'm going to say the things I want to say because if, you know what I mean, like I, if I have the chance to say that's bullshit about something that I think is bullshit, I'm going to do it. I don't know, I think I, I'm just kind of realizing that like, if there's a point I want to get across, I, I actually can get it across, and that's, yeah. that's cool and dangerous at the same time. Yeah. Because we had previously talked, because I just, we pre I had previously added all these things up that Nina does, I like to see Bob Town Barrow, International Traveling Lindley Hop instructor, and she had actually not put that all together. You were like, you you were, you were that, you are in a lot of, in many people's minds, you're you're that ideal that we were talking about yeah. previously that they have, that they would like to shoot for it some distant future. Yeah, I would like to be like if I want to envision like all the cool things that I could possibly accomplish. You know, like, yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting though is that like with all those things, you give up other things to become those other. You know what I mean? Like yeah. to become one thing, you kind of close the door on other things. Yeah. Like. I very rarely get to go to a dance and just be a person there. Yeah. Almost now. Unless I'm in Baltimore. But then I'm a business owner. Yeah, then I'm the ballroom yeah. owner. So like, yeah. even people that have no idea if I'm a good dancer or not, I'm still the owner of the club. Yeah. Right? Um, so like, you give that up. You give up the like, just doing it because you love it. Because at a certain point, like, it's my income. It's what keeps the roof over my head. You know what I mean? It keeps me alive. Yeah. So. It, it becomes a little bit more serious if you don't just get to be like, I just want to dance. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I still am that way about some things, but like, it does, at least for me, it does take a little bit of the magic out of it. Like, when it becomes a little bit more about your job and a little bit more about, like, navigating all this stuff, it takes a little bit of the sweet magic of just like, I walk into a ballroom and there's a band playing and I get to go jump around and kick for three hours. Um, 
On the other hand, it, there's a whole different layer of magic that I get to experience that a lot of people don't, which is cool. You know what I mean? Like yeah. having an influence on something that I love and being able to teach other people how to do this thing that I love and helping to create better dancers so that I can dance with them. You know what I mean? Like that's that's really cool in itself. But it does like it. You don't you don't get everything. You know what I mean? And like yeah. the the paths that you decide to take, they do shut other doors. So you just have to be prepared to be like, oh, okay, you know what? I am now a fancy professional traveling Lindy Hop instructor, and that means that I dance three nights a week, whether I'm sick, whether I have dysentery, if my leg is broken, if I feel bad, if something horrible is happening in my life, if I just broke up with my boyfriend. Like, no matter what happens when you go to a dance, you are an on and happy person because you are being paid to. Do you know what I mean? You don't get to have an off night. You don't get to have that kind of stuff. And that makes it sound super negative, and it's not super negative, but it is like sometimes, like I have definitely been in situations where I had, like I had swine flu in Korea, and I was dying. You know, and you still go out and you like, I wasn't contagious anymore, so I was still going out and dancing, but I felt like shit. And I was puking during classes, and I was puking in the bathroom at the evening dances. And then I would like get it together and go back out and dance. Because you, you don't get a sick day. There's no sick days. It's not like you're like, oh, I'm gonna call in sick to work and I'll just catch up those classes on Monday. Like, what? No, you can't do that. And I think that's like that's the kind of stuff that people don't think about. They think about like being kind of fancy and everyone kind of being interested in who you are. But they don't think about, you know, living out of a suitcase and being in an airport five weeks out of the year. I did that math one time. Have I told you this? Uh, last year, I spent like four and a half weeks accumulatively either in an airport or on an airplane. A month. Uh, yeah. I spent a month in an airplane or in an airport. It's horrible. You know what I mean? Like, it's a fucking wasted time. It's not wasted time, that sounds really horrible, but like it is, it's kind of like us, when you think about it that way, like this is the twelfth of my year that I spent reading horrible books. <laughs> Which I guess is my choice, but I don't know, that part of it's interesting. Yeah. On the other hand, I wouldn't trade for the world. Like if I could go back in time and be a nurse instead. Yeah. I'm not going to say I wouldn't do it, but I would think. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would you trade for? Like, is there an alternate reality where you get a good as a nurse or <coughs> something that she really wanted to pursue? That well, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of gonna trade it because I'm gonna stop traveling so much. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna. I think realistically, I'll probably not stop traveling entirely because I have so many friends that yeah. I really care about that I would never see again, which would be extremely sad. Um, and it, you know, I mean, I'm not going to stop dancing either way, but whether I stop traveling or not, um, I mean, I want to have a family. This is not conducive to that. I mean, I want to have a family where, like, I'm actually part of it. Like, I'm there all the time and I'm a constant, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and if I was ever in the situation where I could still travel and Michael and our kids could come with us, like... That would be one thing, but if there's a like, you know, hell, when I got a dog, I was like stressed out about leaving our dog. Do you know what I mean? I, I feel like if I have a kid, I'm not gonna be able to be like, okay, bye, seven month olds, I'm gonna go, peace out now. You know what I mean? Like, I think that would break my heart. Um, so for me, I mean, I feel like that's maybe the next, and that's that's actually that was one of the, that was a small but deciding factor in opening a ballroom is that I still. Yeah feel connected to this thing and like, you know, and in some ways, like, like we talked about before, like, it's the only thing I've ever put this much, it's the only thing in my life I've ever dedicated this much time to, um, seeing as it's half my life. Yeah. It, you know, it's the only, it's the only thing I've ever put, and I think that like, just walking away from it would be like, horrible, horrible, toxic culture shock for me, and I would not, I would lose something about me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't define me, but it's certainly part of who I am. Yeah. And, uh, 
But like having a ballroom actually kind of fulfills some of that stuff. I still get to teach. I still get to dance a lot. I still get to be part of something and you know connected to it. And even if I don't keep going and around teaching, like you know, I can still be part of deciding who comes and teaches here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And still get exposed to what's going on. And so like that seemed like a really positive thing because hopefully in the next couple of years I can start traveling like five times a year instead of forty, and then you know. Have a family and buy a gallon of milk and a full loaf of bread. And like that. Whoa, hold on, hold on. We, we can cut. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. A whole loaf of bread? <laughs> it's not going to go bad? Are you serious? I haven't bought Are a gallon serious? of Do you know that how long it's been since I bought a gallon of milk? Eight years. I don't think I bought a gallon of milk wow. in eight years. Out there, there's probably a lot of dancers who are just now getting into Lindy Hop and perhaps just now discovering that they have a pretty big passion for it and for what it can offer them in their lives. What advice do you have for them as they start getting into this thing called Mindy Hop? I don't know, I think, I think some good advice is just to remember, remember why Lindy Hop's important to you and don't let it take over everything in your life. That's some good advice. You know what I mean? Like, Lindy Hop, for me, Lindy Hop's important because I love dancing. I love all kinds of dancing, not just Lindy Hop. Like, I belly dance quite a bit now, and I took some time off from that, but I'm back into it a lot, and I love it. And there was a contra dance at our dance last night. I did my first contra dance. That was super fun and hilarious. <coughs> um, but I mean, like, the times I have the least fun Lindy Hopping are when I let extraneous bullshit get in the way and I forget that like moving around is really fun. And moving around with someone else and like having a weird connection with someone for three minutes, kind of singular, awesome. Um, so I think I think that's good advice. Like don't every scene has politics and egos and hurt feelings and stuff like that. And just remembering that like it's just a group of people doing something. It's just like being a cheerleader or playing Magic the Gathering, or being in a band, or anything. It's just a group of people with all of those people's positive and negative qualities. And like, it's a hundred, like everything that happens to people is about them. You know what I mean? I think that if someone could have gone back, if I could go back in time and have me tell me to not freak out when people won't dance with me, it would have changed my dance experience. You know what I mean? And like now that I am someone that people want to dance with, like my body is constantly falling apart. Like my knees and hips and feet are screwed. I'm gonna need new knees very soon. And uh, so I don't social dance that much because it's painful. You know what I mean? Like not emotionally, but like physically painful. Um, which is sad in itself for me. But uh, but like I know like there's been a couple people that have asked me to dance. I've been like, oh no, my knee and blah blah, and they're like just so crestfallen. I feel so bad because I'm creating that experience for them and I don't want to do that, but it's not about them at all, it's about me, you know what I mean? And like, if I, when I go back and think about like the fancy people that said no to me, like, maybe they had strep throat or like a upset stomach. Maybe they had gas, who knows, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, like everyone's experience is kind of about them. So make your experience about you and just don't let all that, don't let anything ruin it for you because it's pretty amazing. You don't get wrapped up in the bullshit. It's the best place on earth. I feel like we should be music playing. That's great. <laughs>
It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah.